Now let's look at how to configure settings for our sites. Let's go into site2.com and we're going to work with a setting called default document. What the default document list does is when you go to a website and you don't specify a specific page, so let's go to site2.com, the default document setting defines which page is going to pull up. So how did it know to pull up the page that shows this content? So if we go to the folder where our site is stored, we'll go to cinetpub site2.com, we'll see that there's two pages here, default.htm and home.htm. The way it knew to pull up default.htm instead of home.htm is default.htm is at the top of this list and home.htm isn't listed. So since no specific page was specified, it goes through this list until it finds one and then displays that page. Now if there was no page in this list, what would happen, so let's break this, we'll just rename it to default-break. If we refresh this page, we're going to get this 403 error where we see that the, the error message is the web server is configured to not list the contents of this directory. So what's happening is we're trying to go to the root of this, of this, this site. It goes through the list looking for a page that matches on the default document list. Since there's no matches, the HTTP spec is, is suggesting that it wants to look at the contents of the directory. Since that's forbidden by IIS by default, we get this 403 error. So let's say we had a site where the default page that we wanted to pull up does not, um, is not listed in the default document list. Changing that is really simple. We just simply select add under actions and we just add home.htm to the list. That's going to go at the top and we notice it's a type local instead of inherited. We'll get into inheritance in a bit. Um, if we go back to our web server, or I'm sorry, our web browser, we refresh the page. We now get the home.htm file which we can see the contents of is this is site2.com slash home.htm. Just to show you, if we pull up home.htm in a text file, um, we see there's you know the content we're seeing in the web browser. Now that's you know somewhat interesting, but what I really wanted to show you was when I made that setting change here to the default document list, this web.config file was created. We, we can see that it was created at 12.23 p.m., which, well, you can't see the clock here, but that's the, the current time. So this web config file didn't exist before, um, and, and what it is is starting in IIS 7, certain settings are now stored in the web config file under the system.webserver namespace. So we can see here we have the system.webserver node, then default document, and then we added a value of home.htm. So this is really handy. Um, it, it's a lot less uh, confusing than the IIS metabase. It's, it's a lot easier to work with. Um, you know, your, de your developers inside of Visual Studio can be adding these types of settings. We'll look later how to move these settings out of web config and back into the IIS config if, if that's, uh, you know, that makes a lot of sense in certain situations. But for now, let's just work with this. And as, you know, as we can see, let's say we wanted to add another setting. So we'll do home2.htm. We'll save that file. If we go back to the IIS manager and we do a refresh, we see that it's added right there. We'll remove it and we re it shows the web config file change so we're going to reload that and there it goes so now let's talk about inheritance and how that works for a bit so first of all let's create a subfolder here we'll uh we'll create a subfolder called contact and let's say for whatever reason our default page in there is contact.htm um, let's just add some content to it this is contact.htm We'll remove that text extension. So now we have this default page is going to be contact.htm and this, this subfolder of content. Again, that's not going to be listed in the default um, document list, but we don't necessarily want contact.htm to be in the default document um, all over the place. So what we can do is here in IIS Manager, we can navigate down to the contact folder and we can set default document at that level. So if you see here we have the list that was inherited from above. So home.htm is listed because it was it's a member of our parent. So we're going to add contact.htm. We'll see now it's a local entry. If we go back to our contact folder, we see that a web.config file was created. Let's say this is, these examples are getting a little um, outside of the real world, but let's say we had a default.htm file also. Oh, excuse me, default.htm, it helps if you spell it right. And let's add, this is, 
the default page. And let's say we did not want default.htm in that list. So if we can, we can just select it, excuse me, say remove. It says, are you sure we want to remove the selected default document? Say yes. We go back to our web config file and we see that under in our settings we have a remove a value and then an add a value. Okay. Now one last thing. Let's say we do not want to have um, um, let's say we want to have contact.htm underneath home.htm. Now what's going to happen when we do that? Let's go ahead and select the move down button. It's going to, since we're moving a local item below an inherited item in this list, it's going to have to break inheritance. So it's asked if that's okay. We say yes. We come back up. We look in our web config file. It's been reloaded. And we see that we have to do a clear. And then we add all the values. And we see that contact.htm is below home.htm. And then just showing, going back up to the root of our server, seeing where that is those um, inherited values are coming from. If we go up to the root of the server, we'll see that we also have the default document setting here. And if we were to say remove um, is, let's remove index.html from the um, root of our server, we come down here to site2.com, we'll see that it is removed here as well.